How do these differ? Well, basically these numbers are these numbers, one, two, one, multiplied by a small integer. Multiply it by two and you get C2H4O2. Multiply one, two, one by three and you get 363. That happens to be the molecular formula for glycerin. It's not necessarily the case that the unknown is glycerin. It's because there are lots of molecules that probably have this molecular formula. I'm just saying glycerin is a possibility. And glycerin also happens to be a colorless liquid. And finally, you can take this on to infinity. In other words, any um, molecule that has a molecular formula, CN, H2N, ON, is going to give exactly the same empirical formula. So, we know more, but we still don't know what our unknown is. In order to get a better idea of what our unknown is, and we're still, at the end of all of this, not going to go exactly what our unknown is, um, we need another piece of information. And another piece of information that we could get might be the molar mass of the unknown. And we could use mass spectrometry, for instance. And suppose we find out that the molar mass of our unknown is 60 grams per mole. How are we going to use that piece of information together with the information that we already have to get an idea of what the molecular formula is or to get the molecular formula? And the answer is to recognize that the empirical formula weight or how much the, uh, the molar mass of the empirical formula divided into the molar, uh, the molar mass of the molecular formula or the molecular formula weight is a small integer and that small integer tells us how many empirical formula units there are in the molecular formula. Let's see if I can make that clearer. What do you think you're doing, Jack? Kidding me? The empirical formula weight is the molar mass of this thing. Okay? And the molar mass of CH2O is 30 grams because we have one atom of carbon or one mole of atoms of carbon, two moles of atom of hydrogen, and one mole of atom of oxygen, and we add 12 grams, which is the molar mass of carbon, two grams, which is the molar mass of two moles of hydrogen, and 16 grams, the molar mass of oxygen, and that gives us 30 grams per mole for the empirical formula weight. Okay? The molecular formula weight is exactly how much each of these guys weighs, right? How much a, a mole of each of these guys weighs. And you can see that if you divide the mass of a mole of this stuff by the mass of a mole of this stuff, it tells you uh, how these guys are related to these guys. In other words, this is exactly twice that, this is exactly three times that, this is exactly four times that. And that idea is expressed in the idea that n which is, again, the ratio between the molecular formula weight and the empirical formula weight is going to tell us what our molecular formula is. So we plug in molecular formula weight, that's 60 grams per mole. And the empirical formula weight, we calculated that, that's the mass of a mole of CH2O, and that's 30 grams per mole. And so this is equal to 2. Right? What is this 2 again? This tells us how many empirical formulas there are in the molecular formula. So in other words, the molecular formula is equal to CH2O okay, times 2 or C2H4O2. Okay? Where this 2 is sort of not multiplying the whole thing, but it's sort of multiplying, or it is multiplying, the coefficients here. In other words, C1, H2, O1, and then each one of these times 2 because we had 2 times the molecular formula, two, the molecular formula weight was twice what the empirical formula weight was. Okay, so we've actually gotten as far as a molecular formula for our unknown compound. And this corresponds to, among other things, acetic acid, which is the acid in vinegar. So it could be our unknown acid is, in fact, or unknown compound is, in fact, acetic acid. It's not necessarily acetic acid, but the point is we've been able to use two pieces of information. The analysis by mass, the carbon, hydrogen, oxygen composition by mass, and the molar mass of the unknown compound in order to determine a molecular formula. Okay? And Ultimately, 
this piece of information can be used to learn more about the compound. For instance, we might find out that it's an acid. That would further solidify the idea that it's an acetic acid. So it's sort of a mystery of which we've gotten part of the way. We can figure out now what the molecular formula is from the two pieces of information that I showed you.